Good day and welcome to the short presentation on the tastes or rasa of Ayurveda and understanding why taste is important as we look at the more holistic approach to health in general. So I will share the screen. So dravya is an object and so the knowledge of substances or objects is what we call dravyadi, vyana or vyana ninyaya. And we're gonna look at what they say in the text. So Vagbat in the Ashtanga Hridayam would say that there is no thing in the universe that is non-medicinal, which may or may not be used for many purposes and by many modes. So we know that in some form, everything that's created is medicine, whether it's in a small amount or a large amount. And that depends on the qualities present. There are six tastes recognized in Ayurveda, which are sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, and astringent. And the sweet taste is made up of the earth and water element. The sour taste is made up of the fire and earth element. The salt taste is made up of the water and fire element. The bitter taste is made up of the ether and air element. The pungent taste is made up of the fire and air element. And the astringent taste is made up of the earth and air element. When we're working with taste in general of a substance or object, dravya, we're looking at three components. So we're looking at the primary taste. This is when the taste hits the tongue and what you're first experiencing, which could be any of those six tastes, sweet, sour, salty, pungent, bitter, or stringent. We're looking at the virya or the property that is making the action possible. So the general virya or energy that we're looking at is either hot or cold, which could be also warming or cooling. And then we're looking at the vipaka. And this is the post digestive effect or post secondary taste. So sometimes you may know you kind of get something at the forefront of the tongue. And then as it moves through the system, you might notice that it's feeling a little bit different. And this is because of the action that the taste has on the digestive system as a whole, or jathar agni. And this vipaka or post-digestive energy or taste is going to either be sweet, sour, or pungent. And lastly, when we're considering the dravya uh, knowledge or understanding these objects, sometimes there's a special effect or a prabhava. And this is something that differs than the taste and the other qualities. And an example of that is that danti and chitrak are both sweet and rasa, but danti is purgative and chitrak is not. So danti has kind of a prabhava or special effect that is different than what we generally recognize the sweet taste to have. Another example of this is kashira, milk, and ghee are made of the same substances that are cooling in nature, but ghee has a prabhava that it kindles or really helps ignite Agni, even though it's cooling. So that's something special about ghee. And that's why ghee can be used for pitta dosha or excess heat in the body, where it'll keep the body cool, but Agni stoked. So if we dive a little bit more into the sweet taste, the sweet taste is wholesome to the body. It adds rasa, Rakta, Mamsa, Medas, Maja, Shukra, and Ojas. So what that's saying is that it adds bulk to all seven tissues of the body. It's soothing to the five senses. It reduces both Pitta and Vata Dosha, but can increase Kapha in excess. It's unctuous, cool, and heavy, but in excess, it can also be difficult to digest because of the heaviness of sweetness. And so you want to make sure that Agni is balanced enough or stoked enough before you start including the sweet taste. And this is one of the reasons why after a cleanse, we generally recommend that people first work on Agni before they work on Rasayanas or tonification and rejuvenation therapy, which generally have a sweet or heavier nature to them. The sweet taste is cooling and the post-digestive effect is generally for most substances sweet. So the sweet taste can relieve thirst, it cools the body down so it relieves burning sensation. It promotes healthy skin because it adds growth of the tissues. It supports healthy hair, voice, and strength. It's soothing, nourishing, and invigorating. It soothes the nose, mouth, throat, lips, tongue. 
and mental fits or imbalances. So if you feel kind of mentally um, weakened or energetically weakened, the sweet taste can help. And this is one of the reasons why we hear a lot for people who work in the office space, that in the afternoon they get a sweet craving and sometimes they'll eat treats or sweets or candies. And so they're craving that nourishment that you could get from the sweet taste, but often in an imbalanced way. And so what you might want to reach for instead is dates, bananas, um, milk is nice cooked or warm with some spices. And on our website, we've got the Ojas balls. And Ojas balls, if digestive fire is balanced enough, are a fantastic alternative for sweets. And you can make them and they store quite well. Next is sour. So sourness or amla adds deliciousness to food. When you hit the sour taste hits your tongue, it actually stimulates the appetite. It nourishes and energizes the body. It enlightens the mind. It strengthens the sense organs. And it also promotes strength. So it reduces vata. It can increase both pitta and kapha dosha. It's light, hot, unctuous. It is heating. And the post-digestive effect is also sour. It nourishes the heart, it promotes salvation, it helps swallowing, moistening, and digestion of food. Because of the heating tendency in it and stimulating energy with the sour taste, it's contraindicated if you've got skin issues. So one of the first things if someone comes to us with skin issues is to recommend reducing or eliminating the sour taste. Anyone with high pitta, you're going to reduce sourness. Examples of this are citrus, tamarind, pickles, tomatoes, really any fermented foods, sourdough bread, cheese, sour cream, yogurt, and vinegar. So if you notice that you've got a craving for things that are vinegary and you have excess pitta or kapha, you're going to want to reduce that. Let's scroll down, that's not working. Next is salty, lavana. So it's a digestive, it cures stiffness and obstruction. It can nullify other tastes and you can notice that if there's too much salt in a meal, you can't really taste everything you're looking for. So it will draw out the taste in a nice way, similar to the sour, or it can kind of override all of what you're eating. It purifies the channels, it also causes salvation. It brings tenderness to the organs and tastiness to food. So salty is sharp, mobile, and clear. It reduces kapha, and it also increases pitta, and, or reduces vata and increases pitta and kapha in excess. It's also uh, heating, and the post-digestive effect or taste is sweet. So in excess, it can vitiate pitta, rakta, the blood channel, and kapha. So this would be another one to reduce if you notice high pitta, or any imbalance in the skin in particular. It activates upon a vayu, so it activates kind of a downward flow of vata, which is why it can be used to clear obstruction. It can also support in adding elimination um, in a balanced way. So examples of this most commonly are salt itself, but you'll also notice seaweed, celery, cottage cheese, salt, soy sauce, and tamari are all examples of the salty or lavana taste. And you can tell that when you're making a dish, sometimes adding a little bit of the sour taste, lemon and a little bit of salt can be balancing. Pink salt or the Himalayan rock salt is actually cooling in nature. So that's a prabhava or special effect to pink salt. So if you notice that you have high pitta in particular or skin issues, you're always going to wanna to use pink salt and even for vata dosha, it can be supportive because it's not going to add excess heat to the body. We usually recommend it for everyone. <clears throat> Pungent, katu, promotes digestion. This is because it's going to increase heat and then agni or your digestive fire. It cleans the mouth. It helps absorption of food. It causes secretions from the nose. It helps sense organ action. This is why if you eat overly spicy food, your nose might start running, your eyes might start tearing. It reduces obesity because it's stimulating dryness, reduces stickiness, 
It increases circulation, encourages sweating, and has a general cleansing effect on the body. So it's going to increase vata and pitta due to its stimulating, heating, drying nature. And it's going to reduce kapha because it's late, hot, and can be unctuous. The virya or the post-digestive effect on the body is that it's heating and it's actually the hottest of all the tastes. And it's also the um, pungent. It's got a pungent post-digestive effect on the body. Examples could be chilies, garlic, mustard greens, turnips, mustard seeds, onions, and black pepper. Now, one thing you'll notice in a lot of the recipes is that some components of katu or pungency are present in a lot of the foods that we prepare. But what you wanna think about is the amount. So adding a little bit of garlic or ginger or um, mustard seeds or black pepper to a dish can stimulate agni without making it overly hot. So what I generally recommend to people with a pitta or vata nature is to look for spice, not heat. As soon as it gets to feel too hot, it might be aggravating where a subtle simulation to digestion can be supportive for most people. Tikta, bitter. So alone, it's not very tasty. It's not something most people crave, but added to other foods, it is actually quite delicious. It's antitoxic, it's germicidal, it cures fainting, burning sensations in the body, any itching, skin diseases, thirst, and fever. So for instance, neem is an example of a bitter herb. We use it to relieve any burning inflammation in the body. It's used for, um, the worms, it's used for fungal infections, it's used for skin diseases, it's used for fever. So it's very bitter and cooling to the system. The bitter taste supports digestion and it purifies the body as a whole. So those of you that have done Panchakarma or gentle cleansing programs with us, you'll notice that there is a predominance of the bitter taste with the herbs that we use for most programs, unless you're in a rejuvenation or rasiana program, purification requires bitter. So pitta and kapha are reduced by bitter, vata, it can aggravate it in excess. So for vata, using bitter greens and herbs, we usually recommend adding something that is sweet or something that adds kind of an unctuous, heavier quality to it. Like if I'm making bitter greens, I usually add coconut milk or you could use ghee. It's cold, light, and dry. It's cooling. And the post-digestive effect is actually pungent or stimulating to the body, hence what it's doing to the system as a whole in the purification process. Examples would be bitter melon, turmeric, burdock root, bitter greens, dark chocolate, and coffee. This is another reason why if you do drink coffee, we always recommend that you have a latte or it can simply be too bitter. You want to add that creamy, unctuous, sweet taste to the coffee at all times, especially if you're drinking coffee every day. And the astringent taste, shaya, the sedative and constipating. It draws inward, it tones tissues, it reduces sweating, it cools excess heat from the system and it's a vasoconstrictor. So most raw foods have some level of astringency to them. Like you can see green banana is the number one example, but there's some astringency to apples, cranberries, pomegranate, cabbage, raw vegetables as a whole, and even turmeric. So you want to use this quality, the least of most tastes, people aren't usually drawn to it, but it does add a nice purification point to the system, but you wanna be careful with it. So it's going to reduce pitta and kapha, it's going to increase vata because it's dry, cold, and heavy. It's cooling and the post-digestive effect is pungent, the vipaka. Most people don't have too much astringency in their diet. <clears throat> So Trock says, the knowledge of the classification of taste and dosha help in knowing the symptomatology of diseases and their treatment. Drugs are known by their tastes and the treatment adopted for the disease is determined by the knowledge of the dosha vitiated. The knowledge of rasa alone can support treatment. Drugs and diets have particular tastes that cause disease and are responsible for treating a particular symptom and if administered with care, can also cure disease. So food can be creating the vitiation or imbalance, 
or if you're using the knowledge of RASA, it can help you in creating something that could cure and prevent disease as a whole. This is one of the reasons why I dove into Ayurveda after studying Western herbology, is that there's lots of amazing plants in the world, we know that. I studied Western herbs and I studied Chinese herbs for some time, but it wasn't until I really started understanding Ayurveda that I recognized that you could take any plant and if you can understand the rasa, virya, and vipaka, you can understand how it can be used as medicine. And so this is much more far reaching than just the Ayurvedic herbs. You can apply this to anything in your local area. And I challenge you to start experimenting with that. You know, you wanna be careful, you wanna work with local plants that you know are safe, but see what's growing in the local herb garden, see what people are using in your area for plant medicine and then start to see if you can determine what the rasa is, what the virya is, is it warming or cooling to the body? And what the vipaka is or the post-digestive effect. And you can definitely share that with us. Sometimes people will kind of play games with this in our Facebook group page, or you can share with us through Instagram. Um, it's fun and you can do it with food too. So you can notice that. And then you can start using the idea of the 20 qualities in nature or the 10 pairs of opposites to help you figure some of this out. And we'll continue working with this on this subject. So it's important to understand that the three tastes that encourage elimination of stool and urine are sweet, sour, and salty. And those that create difficulty in elimination are pungent, bitter, and astringent. So if you notice that you're not eliminating regularly, you would want to increase the sweet, sour, and salty taste. If you're constipated, you would not want to have pungent, bitter, and astringent. Where if you've got loose stools, you could increase the pungent, bitter, and astringent taste and it will constrict or kind of bind up the excess. So relative superiority of taste based on the qualities and these go back to those attributes in nature. The unctuous taste, superior would be sweet, moderate would be pungent, inferior would be bitter. The heating taste, the most heating would be salty. Then hmm, pungent actually would be more heating, I think. Um, that might be wrong. The heavy taste, the most superior that you would use would be sweet, moderate would be astringent, and inferior, inferior would be salty. So the heaviest taste is sweet, the second heaviest taste is astringent, the third heaviest taste is salty, is what they're saying. For dryness, astringent, sour, and then salty. For cooling, sweet, astringent, and bitter. And for lightness, bitter, pungent, and sour. To go a little bit deeper with these ideas of potencies or energies of food, there actually are eight. And so this is a little bit deeper topic from the Truck Samhita. But he's saying that the actions that have the greatest effect on the body are whether a substance is slow or sharp, heavy or light, unctuous or rough, so oily or dry, you could also think of, and hot or cold. The main ones that we see everything else fall into, though, is hot and cold. So that's what we focus on because of its effect on Agni. Vipaka, we talked about the post taste or secondary taste. It changes when it comes in contact with Jathar Agni or the central gastric fire. And so the sweet Vipaka is going to increase Kapha, increase elimination, and increase tissues all the way to Shukra. The sour taste will increase Pitta increase elimination, elimination, and decrease shukra and all the other tissues leading to it. So it's one of the reasons why you don't want to overuse the sour taste if you're trying to support longevity and health. It can be used if you have excess heaviness or excess in the system. So mostly used for kapha. The pungent is pungent, bitter, and astringent taste become pungent in the post-digestive effect. This increases vata, suppresses excreta, it reduces elimination, and it decreases tissue health. 
or the bulk of tissues. So this is kind of a crash course into this. We're gonna be diving into it more. What I would do if I were you is see over the next week or so, if you can identify these tastes. So you might wanna use the examples, like try a green banana, try some coffee, dark chocolate or bitter greens, try some mustard seed, turnips, something pungent. You could try pink salt. You could try citrus fruit and maybe eat some sweet bananas or dates and just notice what's happening. I've played little games before with the kids in homeschool and I'll put something from each of the tastes out. So we'll do an example for each of the six tastes and then I'll have them try it and determine it. And sometimes it's kind of fun to do something that's the most extreme, like a sweet banana, and then do something that's a more subtle form of sweetness, which, which could be rice or wheat or cashews or milk and see if you can still pick up those qualities in it. And it's important to not go too far with any of them, but to have fun, experiment, and see what you can understand more about how rasa, or the concept of taste, is affecting your body as a whole. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Stay tuned for more. All right. Lots of love.